Hey everybody, this is John. This is Nerd Leader. We are back. Alright. Now, what in the hell was I doing? Leaving here is what I was doing. Alright, so we are back here with Fallout London, a uh, newer fan mod project thing. I'm kind of surprised that when I started today, it didn't ask me, Hey, do you want to update? Because usually it asks me if I want to update. That's right, Archie. We need all of the things. Oh, no. Oh god, I'm fucked. No, jump! Jump! <laughs> Archie, for the love of god, run into the thing. Damn. I didn't get away in time. Have you found any story explanation for why those things exist? Nope. Oh, hello. Uh, no, we are playing Fallout London. I have not found any story explanation for a lot of things in this. Okay. Like the Tim's folk, I've not seen anything for that. Oh, oh well. Good is super relative in this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, run away. See, so he jumps from the balcony across the street at you. God, no. that would absolutely be a thing that happens. Of course, that's how you can tell they're a video game enemy and not a real military robot. So if they're a real military robot, they would have guns on them for situations like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to say we have some kind of, at least we had some kind of missile that could shoot other stuff out of the sky to stop it from running into it. There it is. You're barely touching. Did he heal? No, he just takes no damage. I wonder if they're weak to like grenades or anything in fire. Uh. Ah! He blew up. I don't care. <laughs> he ran into Archie, I bet. Makes me think of an old uh, Sonic cartoon from the internet where he was holding Tails up as a shield to block enemies because Tails is technically invincible. Where... he just doesn't have a body? Maybe not. 
I dislike that a lot. I dislike that a whole, whole lot. Ooh. More mannequins. I have to say that Maddie good tricked me because like most of them have it, but that one I was like, oh, it's a dude in a shop right there for some reason. Stop dying slowly. <laughs> attack but I'm really not sure not either I didn't see any sort of indicator I just saw kind of a blue fiery explosion around you yeah that's that's what I saw well the blue I think was my electricity but uh. is that Walker back yes So are they aligned with anybody? If you run into of those one guys, will they blow them up? Or? I don't know. Everything seems to be inside. over there where Archie's running to. Go get him, Archie. Scoped rifle somewhere, right? Yeah. I did. Ooh, maybe I put it up? No, I wouldn't have put it up. I don't think I would have put it up. <laughs> Archie might be holding it. Oh, you know, he might be. Yeah, I think he is. He's not holding this, though. is quick. Oh god, he's fast. And it's like Wow, this enemy is smart. Yeah. It's smarter than your typical Fallout enemy. Does he have too much threshold that you can't damage him? Yeah, he might. Damn, he caught up to me. Okay. Where am I headed to? Let's let's. I don't know. I don't even, uh, you're up in the northern area, right? I think so. I. Th what am I trying to get to here? Yeah, as far north as I thought. 
I'm trying to get to this. Okay. Oh, wait, what? Can you place the marker just out on the map somewhere, thus being able to remove it? There ah, you go. that's what it was. Excuse me. Oh, get fucked. Okay, well, I just fell in water and I'm not messing with that, so we are just gonna... We're just gonna let it happen. We're just gonna let it happen. I wish there was a better way of waiting, other than, well, you have to wait on a bench. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so you can't just do the standard Bethesda stand in there thing? No, since Fallout 4, that's like been a thing. Hmm. This could be annoying if that's true in Elder Scrolls 6. If that's a thing in Elder Scrolls 6, I, I'm not going to say that I won't play it, but that is going to be a large bitch of mine. Okay, cool. We found a chair. That doesn't let us wait. Ugh, for fuck's sakes. Maybe you can wait in those comfier chairs over there. Over by the table. Oh, yes. There you go. It's like, I'm not waiting on this hard thing. It's bad for my ass. It was, aren't you sitting in your lap? I... God, I hope not. <laughs> a really bad look for my character. <laughs> you know, I can have a rapport with children and that's something that can make me a little uncomfortable in an odd kind of way of like how are their parents going to react to this of other people's kids just wanting to sit on my lap and I'm like, well, I'm okay with this, but <laughs> are your parents okay with this? That's what killed me that first time around. You think it's a sniper on the roof with the missile launcher? <sighs> Could be. Uh, something that'll make some bandit caps not necessarily worth walking into in three is so it'll be like that chick with the rocket launcher. Yeah. But I, I see a better way through at least, so I can get back there quickly. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not the deal so much with the naval walker. I just feel like a game that would be neat to know the layout of places.
Cubs are known for their decapitating ability. I was gonna say I reverse decapitate them. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> it's like in the head is still standing. See, so you pissed up a buddy there. This is that guy you were originally rooting up on the those steps. Archie, my boy, there you are. Oh my. He has quite a bit on him. <laughs> Oop, he's hit his limit. Fuck. <laughs> Having the looter's dilemma. Yes. There's a thing murdering and looting, that's fine, but littering? That's it. Line too far. <clears throat> so I work at a school and I heard a teacher talking about how littering bothers them. And then went out of the way, I'm not a liberal or anything. <laughs> what the fuck did that have to do with anything? <laughs> well, I mean, I said, whoa. I mean, that's just how polarizing everything's got nowadays. If you, if you say anything that might sound like one size rhetoric, you know. It's like... I mean, I've heard people say stuff pro-woman and be like, not that I'm a feminist. legendary one so I get him halfway down and he's fucking still blasting me with the fire oh my god holy shit this is uh, I just have to go around this cluster of buildings I I don't know if I can oh okay yeah, I know a lot of this uh, map is really packed in well it's not just packed in it's um it kind of <laughs> tunnels you so if I go this way, I have to deal with the naval walker. If I go this way, I have to deal... If I go this way, I have to deal with... Um, the psycho guys or whatever? I, I gotta deal with whatever is that way. And that's like not even the way I'm going. So... And that's got well, uh, turrets that way. And then this way... Like, look at the map real quick. I guess what I mean necessarily is like... Not so much doing that, but like literally going like way around. I don't know that I can. Oh, okay. Like this, I think this is a physical barrier mm. I think okay because this is also area that I don't think you can just get into I don't know the okay I, uh, I have noticed I'm doing a lot of like you said funneling you into tunnels and stuff like you have to go this way it's almost kind of like they wanted to make set levels in an open world game Where did that come from? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it came from, like, if this was the alleyway Archie ran down, I think it came from over here. But I could be wrong. <sighs> Eek. <laughs> this game gets you, man. You don't think it's one of those things that you're just playing supposed to be higher level that they thought you'd engage with the world more before you got to this point? Kind of like, uh, like uh, Borderlands can do that. It's like, wait, you've been doing all the side content, right? Borderlands does that for sure. That's really frustrating in that game. Like, I, I, I don't know how much this one, uh, this particular mod, like, levels with you and or has places. It's like, the level with you, once you get higher level than it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, uh... Oh, Oblivion did some of that. 
I'd be like, well, this game level scales, but still. <laughs> That guy just have low stats? Why is he running so slow? Okay, okay, they're, they're hitting me. Come on. Another reverse decapitation. Yeah, I know we've talked about this stuff. You talk about guys throwing away their lives, but like... Would you prefer it or not if after you killed enough of those guys, the rest of them broke for it and tried to get the fuck out of there? I would like there to be a chance of that. Cause that's something that bugged me in like Skyrim. Ah. Uh. <laughs> there would be the guys that like surrender and they're like, ha, just kidding. Yeah. But they all did that. Yeah. It, it does make it hard to roleplay in the game. Yeah, and, and you know, and that's kind of supposed to be the point, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, this character doesn't murder and steal. No. Oh wait, I have to. Yeah. That's another thing that bugs me, is that it, if you don't know where Ember is, that's the only way to get that information. I guess what are we talking about? When you have to go to Riften to find Ember. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to join the Thieves Guild if you don't know where he is. But if you're playing a character who's just like, I don't steal shit, you pleb. Yeah. Then, or please, whatever. Then you're just kind of stuck doing it. But if you've got metagame knowledge, you can just walk right up to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is no... I, I, I was actually quite su presently surprised when that was possible, that I was able to go down and do everything with Presburton. And that... You know what the really silly thing about being able to do that is? What's that? It's the fact that you could just walk in... What is it, the Ragged Flag in or whatever? Yeah. You could just show up there as anybody. Like, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. Like, well, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of guys who threaten to kill me when I join the Thieves Guild who are just like, Hey, man. Why are you in our hangout? That's not cool. You know, sometimes I wish there was a little more flexibility in Skyrim, but then I'm like, you know, the kind of dicks Bethesda are, I know what they do with it. Like, uh, I've had a lot of people say that, uh, the reason you shouldn't pick, well, like, one of the big reasons you shouldn't pick the Legion over the Stormcloaks is they put Maven Blackbriar in charge, and, uh, it's funny that... <sighs> She's essential because of that. You can't kill her and be like, well, no, she's not going to be in charge. She's dead. <laughs> the, you know, but the thing is, is if you did, they'd be like, oh, we'll put someone in there that you regret killing her. <laughs> you got it, boss. I do like tea stations. I think that's a nice touch for this game. Right, uh, look at those posters again. What do they say? Can you not get to it because of the bar? Shakespeare's Globe. Is this where you were getting to? Nope, but... A neat landmark, nonetheless. Oh. 
Might be a little pretense going on here. Only, only a little though. That seems like a lot of damage for a gun, but that is not a round that I see often. to do guns in video games, kind of like bows used to be long ago in Dungeons and Dragons in that the bow doesn't do the damage, the oh projectile does the damage, you know, kind of like, well, this, this pistol has this kind of accuracy and stuff, but, well, what kind of bullets are you shooting out of it, you know, 45s do this, or, you know. I think that should be a factor, it shouldn't be all of it. Okay. Because, uh, well, uh, composite bows are a thing, you know? Yeah. I thought that said womb meat. I'm playing too much Elden Ring. <laughs> Getting that monkey off your back. Yes. <laughs> that is so ridiculous. <laughs> You gotta be careful. Dog I food's addictive. I, I, know, I know it's cat food, but I want to make some play on those old Fancy Feast commercials, but with a Fallout London character. You put down the glass bowl and everything. <laughs> That's only the best crack for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> The other day when you're, we were playing this and he kept talking about it, that's why I kept picturing those, those fancy feast commercials. <laughs> of course, uh, that makes me think of when they started selling those dog food meals and pouches that looked like soup sometimes. I'd be like, man, that looks better than the food I eat. Only because it probably is. That makes me think of when people get too disconnected and into the idea of treating pets. I don't want to say overly well, because, you know, I like to treat pets well, but, like, 
uh, you'll see stuff where they're talking about, you know, well, don't feed your pets human food because it's bad for them. And the funny thing is, is like a dog, it could eat crap you couldn't eat. It, it could literally eat out of trash and be fine, right? Yeah. But what they're talking about is human food, at least where we live, is inherently unhealthy. And that's what the problem is. It's not that, you know, if you're feeding, you know, your dog scraps from, you know, the dinner table, that it's not stuff it can eat. It's more like we don't eat healthy. But also, you know, as much as I like to take care of pets, they, they don't say, I'm not buying them more expensive food than I'm buying myself. Because I'm so out of touch with modern times, the term free roam parenting is a good example of that. Shut up and show me what you got, Fire Attack. <laughs> you know, I know there's different interpretations of these characters, but you know in Ivanhoe, Friar Tuck used a halberd, and he would, like, spin it above his head. Huh. Because, you know, the Robin Hood characters are in Ivanhoe. Do you know that's an example of the kind of stuff that like I don't know saying that piece of fiction has to be this way but it was something I don't know it was something I was into when I was a kid like a little kid but I couldn't tell you shit about what happened and I've read the book I watched the movies from back in the day I still couldn't really remember like what the actual story was <laughs> yeah um I have not seen or read it so I couldn't tell you either mm. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's one of those stories about the nobility saving the peasantry from the nobility. Imagine that. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, that was something that allowed Robin Hood to be told as a story eventually, was when they co-opted him into being a noble as opposed to just a thief. You know what I mean? Cool. I think that's the most <clears throat> stim packs I bought in one go. But you know, speaking of that kind of stuff, I was thinking about how much of Robin Hood fiction is an amalgamation of a bunch of characters like Robin Hood. His original story was a lot shorter than the grander tales that he ended up being in, right? Yeah. And Maid Marian is one of those characters. She's another folk hero. They just folded in and were like... She's his girlfriend, right? Yeah. And I'm kind of curious what her old tales were like and stuff. I wonder if they would be palpable, palpable for a modern audience if, like, someone made direct fiction out of them, you know? Hmm. Of course, that makes you think of... You remember that time period? There was even a movie about it and stuff where they tried to basically make that kind of fiction with the folk heroes from American stuff. They were like, you know, Pico Spill and John Herder go and kick ass together. And it's like, what? That's <laughs> <laughs> what Indian Cupboard basically was.
Did you know I've heard that that was like a series of books actually? Of course, then I heard, it gets weird, I was like, oh, the, the, the story about a kid with a magic cupboard that he uses to bring stuff to life in some kind of existential nightmare gets weird? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> I want to say at one point in one of the books he starts bringing toys of real figures to life, and he's like, did, did they come from an alternate reality? <laughs> The movie itself was kind of weird. Yeah. <clears throat> they really caught the popular imagination, though, at the time. So that was definitely... I don't want to call it flash in the pad, but that was huge for a few years. Maybe in about a decade, and then it just kind of... I guess those kids grew up, and other kids were watching new stuff. Yeah. It's, I think, something that people need to chill out about. Like, I get overly serious about old fiction, but I also realize kids don't care about this, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> you know, like... That's certainly something that I, um... I kind of think about with, like, my own kid, where uh, I... I want to introduce him to all of this cool shit that I grew up on, but at the same time, I also want him to be a part of the conversation in his peer group. Yeah, yeah. You don't want them to be like, well, the real good cartoons are the old Bugs Bunny ones made by, you know, this guy or that guy. And it's like, okay there, hipster. <laughs> Although. But, you know, that's also something that my wife was going out of her way to make sure that he didn't, like, absorb some of this stuff. Ah. Uh. Like... I, I kid you not, this is something she said to me. She didn't want him watching Paw Patrol because she didn't want him to grow up trusting police. Uh, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> well, you know, that's not a localized concern. There's actually a mother's group, I want to say, against Paw Patrol because of that. Because, <sighs> you know, you can't have the main character good guy dog be a cop. Although, that makes me think of, <laughs> I was playing Silent Hill last night, there's a part at the end of the game where the cop character is pointing her gun at somebody and she's like, freeze, and then shoots right away, I'm like, yep, standard police procedure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I understand, you know, that police in America right now do not have the, the best of reputations. <sighs> you, you should not be in the forefront of just telling children don't trust police. It's not... Well, it, it does create this odd environment, well then who do I run to in danger? Exactly. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying the police are always the most safe people, but there's people worse than they are. <laughs> and that's what they're there to stop. Although I guess, didn't a judge recently determine that police do not have to help you? So, yes, that is a thing. Uh, there was a court case, this was a federal court case, so this this is the law of the land of America now. Police are not obligated to help you. But... And I'm going to be devil's advocate here for a moment. It isn't as... It's, it's not exactly the ruling that it's being painted out as being. It's more of a protection on cops can't be sued because they didn't protect you. Uh. Um, so I, I don't know the, the details of the entire case because I didn't you know I didn't get too far into it but it's my understanding that this was just to protect cops you know you can't sue a cop in the course of doing their job or not succeeding so at their job so you're saying that like if i'm sitting there with a broken leg and they have to shoot those guys over there that i can't be like hey man they ignored my problems pretty much that's that is what it boils down to now there's gonna be people that twist it into this thing well cops don't have to do this cops don't have to do that like well no cops don't have to do a lot of things um i i would tell you that 
the cops are, are protected by a union that kind of already, you know, makes sure that they're not going to get any sort of serious shit if things go awry. So it's all very complicated. It's all very... There's, there's a lot that people aren't talking about in cases like that versus what they are talking about. You know, and it's just like the the woman with the, the hot coffee. Uh, coffee's hot. She couldn't sue McDonald's because coffee's hot. Like, okay, but that's not what she sued over. She didn't sue them because they didn't tell her her coffee was hot. She sued them because she incurred medical bills from being served coffee that wasn't safe to serve people because of how hot it was. When the state of New York went in and tested the coffee at McDonald's, they found that McDonald's was serving it at temperatures above what is legal to serve to people. Here's a fun fact about coffee. The hotter it is, the longer it stays fresh. Interesting. So... Gas stations, restaurants, a lot of places, they keep it as hot as they can for as long as they can because that allows them to serve it longer. Coffee can stay on a burner for four hours before it's got to get tossed. Oh. Some places dump it after two, but it's safe up to four hours. Or it's it's fresh up to four hours. Of course, I was getting that burn taste. Yeah. It just drives me nuts. And, you know, then the only one that I, I think I'd like to know more details on, given how I know lawsuits get kind of blown out of proportion in media, is the Winnebago guy. Is that really as bad as that's always been reported to me? Because that guy didn't have cruise control properly explained to him, so he put his Winnebago, his brand new Winnebago, on cruise control, got up and made a sandwich while he was traveling, like, 60 some miles per hour down the highway. Mm. <laughs> that is that is probably as presented, but I, I would like to know more details on it, because like I said... I mean, I think that's one thing that people had less sympathy for, because a lot of people have literally seen an adult put cruise control on and take their hands off the wheel and be like, well, what are you doing there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, there's, there's a lot of frivolous lawsuits that get reported on in media and outlets and places like that where it's just like, did you, did you, did you really read the details? Did you actually look into it? You know, that sort of thing. Well, you know, the, uh, the McDonald one, McDonald's one, whatever you want to bring the brass tacks of it down to when it comes to what actually happened. It's more an example of anything else of a company to save face spending more money than they would have ever had to in the lawsuit to defame the suitor. You know, I mean, you think about it, that, that's... Think about people wouldn't have heard about it if there wasn't the big campaign about how ridiculous it is. You look behind the scenes and they had lobbyists and a bunch of people making commercials and giving money to news outlets and stuff, you know, and like... Like I said, they spent more than she would have got out of them. But it made her the stupid one, and them just, well, we're just McDonald's. Yeah. You know, we're just doing our job, just giving people coffee. She shouldn't have put it between her legs. I mean, think about it. The fact that we knew where she held it, all that stuff, you know, it really, they, they, if you think about it, they painted this really pictured, or uh, really, like, silly picture of a frazzled woman trying to drive a car with coffee between her legs, and, you know. She wasn't even driving. Ah. <laughs> But, you know, that's the image that we had, though. It is. It is. It absolutely is. But she wasn't even driving. Her son was driving. Ah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I brought this up to someone I used to work with. It was like, but we can all agree coffee's hot. Right? I said, yeah, we can all agree coffee's hot. And I said, when was the last time you spilled coffee on yourself and you need to go to the hospital to have skin grafts? <laughs> because she did. And... Uh, that's just crazy to me. I actually got pretty badly burned oh, by uh, one of those big things of coffee that, like, they'll have at, like, church get-togethers and stuff. Yeah. And I didn't need skin grafts. 
I got very badly burned over most of my back, but I didn't need skin grafts, so the coffee wasn't that hot, so even they were being more reasonable about it. Ah. <laughs> uh. Alright, so we gotta come in here now, and we gotta talk to this very British general. Yeah, they're really making you go through the business to get a gas mask, aren't they? So, two different things that would piss off the kind of guy you're talking to, or, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nah, I, I really want this cast mask, so I'm gonna shut the fuck up and do what you ask. talking about about a bunch of people coming and trying to join groups like this as long as they didn't have any too extreme ideals would be very even if they did they still would be, would be very appealing to a lot of people in the wasteland just because you know we got guns we got foods we got beds <laughs> you know. well so like the opening of the game kind of leads me to believe that there is still a parliament government running things mm -hmm. Yeah, they were saying something about the being somewhere and people just mostly not caring about it. <sighs> so this is... Okay, so here's one of the spots I was talking about where you can open a gate and just go into the background. Oh. So let's see if I can still get into it. Always been to me an odd conceit of the Bethesda games. Is the whole slower when your weapon's out? I get it's probably a balance thing or whatever, but like, I wonder if it applies to enemies. Or... Hmm, that's a question. Which way was it? don't think it was this way. I think it was this way. God save our gracious queen. Long live. Yeah, yeah, I think it was this way. You know, I was thinking a lot of the it, relatively recent across history times, the, uh... Yep. Ah. So this is just un... You're, you're, like, outside of the bounds now? That's what it looks like. This looks like out-of-bounds stuff.
But, uh, but, you know, the whole, like, God save the queen thing, I know that there, right now, what it would be would be God save the king or whatever, but, like, uh, I wonder, because there's been, you know, there's the recent Queen Elizabeth, there was the Elizabethan age with that other one, there was the Victorian age, stuff like that. They've had a lot of prominent queens, but the way things are going, do you think they'll have another one? Or that they're done with their prominent queens? Not that they're like, no more, boy, that's just not going to happen anymore. You know, I don't know, because I have been I, I have been hearing for years, and I, I am not an English citizen, and I'm not... You know, I'm not over there, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know the the temperature of, of of the country. But you know, I've heard it insisted for years that the monarchy is on its way out, uh, and I just don't know that that's the case. Yeah. Because as far as I can tell, it seems like England loves the fuck out of their monarchs. Uh. And that is very like, juxtaposed to America, where we despise the shit out of our leadership. Uh, I mean, here we're like, not having kings makes us American, and they're like, well, having a king makes us more British than you Americans. So, you know. <laughs> so, it's, you know. But now this is supposed to be, I guess, the inside of uh, the museum. Yeah. And I guess for whatever reason, they put a gate into here. But, you know, you can look. Trees that aren't attached to the ground. Yeah. I have a feeling it's so that they just barely poke up over the top of things. I wonder if they light up with the trees that are actually in there. Oh, my God. That makes that even worse. Or, wait, no. Is that just... Oh, no. That's just the gate. So, for whatever reason, they decided, let's put a gate here. Instead of another building or an inaccessible door... Or literally anything. Gate, right here. And this just takes you into... And if you come over here... Right? I guess shit, even the buildings aren't actually attached to the ground. Well, I noticed the windows aren't even actually necessarily all that sunk into the building. Some of the windows back there were a little hanging out. Um, right here is the entrance into the museum. Ah. So if I went in this way... I would be, I would still be on this side of the gate. Huh. <laughs> Except inside of the, you know, yeah. There's a couple places like this that I have found in the game. And they're all very funny to me. Um, this is just an example of the kind of polish that I'm saying this game needs. Uh because this mod does a lot right, but it does a lot not right. <laughs> I don't want to say wrong, but it's just... I, I think if this got released as an actual Fallout game, there would be a lot of backlash over how bad it is. Uh. And again, I, I think it's a good game. I It's a little more challenging. It's a little more survival feeling than I think a typical Bethesda game would be. But that doesn't make it bad. That just makes it different, you know. Something's attacking Archie. <laughs> You're on your own, Arch. <laughs> Alright, let's go, like, heal. Enemies are nearby. Well, come on, Tommies, let's do some shit.
Ah. I gotta ask him to join me, I bet. Uh, it's just the, that's where you return to afterwards, right? No, nah, that's where I gotta. Oh, okay. That's where I gotta go. What's this over here? No, okay, this is where I gotta return the one thing. Okay, well, I, I need to rest anyway, because I am super low on health. Mm. Uh, I think I need to be... I think I need my rads taken care of. When it comes to Fallout 4, would you say you get more reds in this, aside from in water, or in that? Uh, definitely this. Okay. Because in this, it's like 250 reds per second. Oh, I was saying outside of water. I know in water oh. in this, you get a, aside from that, would oh, you, like okay. just generally running around the world, would you say you build up more in this, or in 4? Probably more in 4. But it feels like it's more in this because options to get rid of rads are a lot more, like, available. Mm, okay. I guess I haven't seen you really come across a whole lot of rad away in this. More rad X. Yeah, I run into a bunch of rad X. Um... Oh, shoot. I need to get up and take care of something super quick. Sorry. Okay, fun fact, uh, weekend days are laundry days around here. <laughs> oh. I forgot to hit start on the machine. Boss, but uh, 
What exactly is it about this that seems so mad? The bridges gone into the teeth. You couldn't sneak a gnat spot in there. And watch the good it blowing it up. Syndicates have been trying to call us terrorists ever since we broke out that friendly defense. If we bomb a prison, they'll just use that as propaganda against us. Not everyone's fond of prisons, God. And our lot in there have some grit in a fight. It'd be nice to have them back in our numbers rather than rotting in the clink. There's some logic in your lunacy, Shrapnel. We could do with more hands. And it would stick it to the dogs if we break our boys out of the drench. All right. Tell our truck we all plan, man. What is happening here? Oh. God. <laughs> it's like this game is just absolutely falling apart at the seams. <laughs> Because I couldn't say 007. <laughs> That's a registered trademark of United Artists. Actually, United Artists is owned by MGM, I think, who is now owned by Amazon. No? Oh. Amazon owns James Bond. He wants me to rob the train. Boss wants me to blow it up. Excellent. So the train passes from the station is once you're there. We'll be waiting in camp. Yeah. I'm sure it would be just that simple. What could go wrong? It's only the syndicate's most important and highly guarded assets we're talking about. So in case it's if we contact them, even if we could have Yeah, I'm just skipping this, sorry. Good luck. Wham. It's like playing Goldeneye all over again. <laughs> Christ. Bones is what we need. Yeah, same with you. Always out more than us. Way more. We can't win a war without enough weapons. Syndicate. 
Syndicate get regular supplies from the Gentry factories. I know of a depot they run in a warehouse by West India. I say we break in there and clean it out. You must be joking. Security will be tighter than a rat's arse there. I'd have to send a whole team in to get more than a handful of guns. It's two dice of my half. I know a gal that might be able to help us. An old, uh, associate. She could find a way past the systems there. Uh, at least long enough to shift some crates out. We just need someone to break in. And Is this just me, or do these guys look, like, unnaturally clean for post-apocalyptic setting? Get your fucking yeah. Who's he talking to? Ah, there we go. Now we're now we're back at the conversation. I thought it was a little more uncanny earlier when the two guys sitting here and here were talking to each other, but they were both looking at you while saying stuff. Yeah. I know that's 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 how these games work, but. Good. Take these charges. Find the way to this warehouse and send them. Who, who's he? Who's he talking to? Oh. Yep. Okay. Here we go. No. Maybe your bits and pieces are jumping around the map. Maybe. I mean, it looked like there, like you just walked away from that guy while talking to him. Yeah. What in the fuck is going on? <laughs> Alright. Oh, wait. Where's... That's what I need. Need help. Yes. Let's take a look at you. I know I flick all of my needles. Take care. Alright, alright. So back at the to the task at hand here. I think we're getting pretty close to where I was in my original playthrough. Oh, okay. But I did get more of the, uh... Um... 
Vagabond quest done. Oh no, this is for um, the gas mask. Oh, okay. There's a variety of attack dogs in this game, by the way. Yeah, I noticed they're not all the same breed. I don't know if that was a trap or a grenade. It was a trap. Pretty sure it was a trap. Okay. And I saw the indicator and I was like, nope, just keep going. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, damn it. Guy tried for a power attack. Uh. <sighs> I mean, low agility sucks. Ah, uh, yeah. Holy shit. I exploded that woman. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha.
Okay. Okay. Shit. And I knew it was there. Fuck. Oh, hey. Oh, we're good. Sorry, I didn't see you there. If you're still there, I don't think you are. Never mind. Uh. <laughs> past this glowing one? No. But, there's a bed here. Uh, and that can be handy for this part. Yeah. <sighs> I, I hit it, but it counted to be holding it down for some reason? Okay. Give me that delicious irradiated blood. <laughs> there we go. We've we have now auto saved. I was gonna say, are you gonna swing or not? something above like look a little more forward like no, over that way like uh, see that yellow thing up there on the side yeah look there's some grenade cluster okay Exploded. I didn't sever it. I exploded it. Oh, he can just go through the tripwire. He broke it. Oh. I have a feeling there's like a bomb cluster right above the door, like a bucket or whatever. Oh, maybe not. Makes me wonder if it was a rigged shotgun or something. Is that a thing in this one? Yeah. I think there is one in here. What's the trap here? Oh, look up right above the door. Maybe it's like, no, it's not right up there. I don't know. 
Is it outside of the door? Is it maybe back outside, like over to the right or something? No. Oh, huh. Is it itself like a claymore or something? No. I probably know it was just like a bell trap or something, but I don't even see the bells. No, I am for sure there's like a gun. Like, th that was like a shotgun trap. Whatever. It'd be funny if after disarming it, he picked up the shotgun himself. That could have been it. Me to hit him. You saw him. Uh, I think right there is the other ash pile. Uh, you might have to go forward to get it and kind of turn your perspective down. Oh, and then maybe not. <laughs> is he knocked him further away than I thought? Gun to your left, I guess it missed. I'm right here, guys. Come get me. So path fighting, I mean, that hard at a time. viewers at place well eat shit I don't know if that stops stuff from going off I don't, I don't think it does I don't see anything in there I have to have. I need a quick save. Nope. 
Almost took out Arch. Oof. I want to point out how much trouble this is to go through for getting to the Bank of England. Uh. Like these, these raiders, these hooligans, they are dedicated. Dedicated. Yeah. Assuming they ran away to, through here to get over there? Yeah. Yeah, fuck that guy, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think I had to actually come in here. But it's an area within an area. a lot of places that's that is all of the hooligans I have to kill okay I'm off to a good start <laughs> uh, getting through here is kind of a Thing. Oh, it's the Museum of Witchcraft. I'm, I mean, that's that's what I call banks. <laughs> that's just me, though. Why is there all the American flags around? Man, three grenades? They're like, we know he's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I think I set off a tripwire. Ah, uh, okay. Down. Uh, yep. My complaint with them is different than the one I'm about to make, and it's not an actual complaint, it's just kind of, is it me, or is Requires Key one of the most, like, yes, you're playing a video game thing a game can say? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, look out! There's a tripwire, like, at belly level on that. I don't know what it did. Did it alert them all to you? No. Say much of it became and then went on to learn it. <coughs> I think it was for a gun. Uh. But I can't see the gun. Yeah, me either.
Huh, no, I can't see the gun. Nope, oh, there it is. Well, wow, oddly hidden. Well, I mean, you know. Here are a lot of these guys going for the Hagar look. They just don't have the muscle. Uh, I can see that. And by that I mean the mayor, not the Viking. I knew what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> you say it was? What would you think the time period was? Cause something I noticed as a shift when I was growing up is uh, heroes stopped having mustaches. And I'm not saying, you know, man, a hero's gotta have a mustache. I just kind of wonder when, what, you know, it's just a thing that kind of stopped being a thing eventually, you know what I mean? I'm gonna get cancelled for saying this. Mustaches became associated with homosexuality in the early 90s. Oh yeah, I guess they did. Okay. I guess is that why they kept being like, man, it looks like you got a porn stash. Probably. I guess that was around the same time period they started being associated with being perverted. You know, they started, went from like heroic characters in fiction having mustaches to the pervy guy in fiction having mustaches. Yep. And you know whatever whatever floats your boat, I don't give no fucks about. But that's that is absolutely what it was. Honestly, that's um, that's why it's David Banner, not Bruce Banner, because Bruce is a gay name. Ah. That is literally what the Stan Lee was told by uh, was it CBS? Oh. <laughs> so Homer's right. People do consider Bruce, Lance, and Julian to be gay names. And again, that's just that's what they told him. You know, because gay is a race. Yep. With their ethnic names and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. No one told Batman. It's like no, let's give him a gay name. <laughs> Keep it, you know, in tradition. Like, I don't care if you married a man because you have a real homosexual name from the old country. The, you know what, though? <laughs> that almost caused a fist fight between me and a friend. Oh. Uh, we were playing Trivial Pursuit, and the question came up, what is the real name of the Incredible Hulk's alter ego? And I was like, it's Bruce Banner. And they're like, that's wrong. I said, how the fuck is that wrong? I said, well, it's David Banner. I was like, I will fight you, motherfucker. That is right. <laughs> You know, as someone who had been associated with the Hulk more in cartoons and comics and didn't watch the old show for a long time, I didn't know what people were talking about about him being David Banner. I'm like, what? And then I saw the show and I was like, I see. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think something people tend to discount is just how much TV shows inform the general populace and stuff, you know. I know movies do to, to agree, too, you know, like... Like, for a long time in people's minds, Tony Stark is going to be from that time in the comic books when he was washed up and drunk. Because that's the way he was in the movies. You know, to me, that's a take on Tony Stark. That's not baseline Tony Stark, you know what I mean? But to a lot of people, that is, and it's going to be... I don't know if they're just going to straight up embrace it for the next decade, or if they're even worried about it, but like... I, I think I would have liked to have seen more of a um, demon in a bottle story in the movies. They kind of did that in number two, but not really. Yeah, yeah, that was that was it. 
storyline they never fully invested in. They're like, no, it's just how Tony is. Yeah. No matter how sober he is, he's still a washed up piece of shit. <laughs> but like, uh, I'm not trying to be too harsh on it. It's just more like what the sh- movies were trying to do. <laughs> yeah. But here's a question for you. Are you looking forward to or dreading him as doom? Well, okay, so... When they announced Ben Affleck as Batman, I was like, that is terrible. And then... I started seeing what they... What Batman they were trying to do. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess I could see... Ben Affleck doing that Batman. Because they were trying to do, like, the Dark Knight Returns kind of Batman. And it kind of seemed like Batman vs. Superman, that's what the movie was going to be. That's what they were advertising it. And then, of course, they, like, pull the rug out from underneath you at the end. It's like, no, it's really the death of Superman. That's the movie. Uh, Which, I don't know, when I saw that in theaters, I was like, why would I didn't see that coming. You know, in the original, what was it? There were four of them, five of them? How many were there in the original set that, set that ended with Schumacher? Because that started with Keaton. That's all that same continuous story. Yeah, so... Like, who was there from the beginning to the last one? No, I'm saying how many of those movies were there? Four. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I have long wondered if Bath- Affleck ended up being Batman in, like, the fifth one of those, what that would have been like. Or, you know, your place, like, let's say the one where, uh, what's his name, Kel- Kilmer played him, if it was him instead. I think he could have been that particular Batman, but, like, I just, I'm not saying he would have been good or bad, I just kind of wonder if in a, or, like, let's say, you know, in the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, if it was him instead. A bail, like, you know, do you think he could have played that Batman? I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I, I just, I just don't see it. The The Batman that he portrayed in the Snyderverse films, yeah, no, I could see that. That was a lot more digestible. So you're saying it's a wild card like that, or what yeah. was your point with it? So it it came out better than I was expecting. Yeah. Is that, do you have the same worries about him playing Doom? Kind of, but I'm I I'm mean, prepared you... to just say, you know what? Is he a method actor? Kinda, yeah. So I mean, he's just gonna be Robert Downey Jr. if he was Doom, like he was with Iron Man or Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. That's what makes me worried because okay, like. Let's say Charlie Day, right? Yeah. I actually think he's a pretty good actor, and that might seem odd, but he's really good at standing there saying his lines, looking like he's in a scene. But can he play any other kind of character? Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to hate on him, but I, I sometimes I'm like, could he be in a very different role? You know, can he be a hero or a villain or, like, a normal guy? You know what I mean? Like, does he always have to be kind of a, well, a Charlie Day character? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... I kind of like Johnny Depp. It's like, I like Johnny Depp, but he always, he's a method actor, so he's always Johnny Depp as, you know. I mean, I think part of the reason that uh, people are so into Jack Sparrow is they didn't see him play T- Hunter S. Thompson, you know. Like, he can disappear into a role, but it's still him as that character, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to hate on it, you know. I, I like Johnny Depp, he's fine. But... There, there are a few people uh, on this planet that I, I would trust to play Thompson in, in a adaptation of anything. Ooh. Right, you ever see Bill Berry, t- Bill Berry take a crack at it? Have you seen where I, the I, I have seen Where the Buffalo Roam, and that movie <laughs> was better than I expected it to be. Uh, I don't know exactly what I expected that movie to be, but it was it was better than what I what I was expecting. That's basically how I feel about it. Like I'm not saying I'll never watch it again, but I don't know that I'd seek it out. But I was like, huh, interesting take. <laughs> I have to say, uh, what's the guy who always hangs out with him? He was played by Benicio del Torres in the Johnny Depp movie, but like Raul Duke. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh no, Raul. I don't know Raul Duke, as I think is was the pen name. Mm. Oh shit! It has been a while, so I've kind of forgotten. It's Doctor Subdid, yeah. He's always like. I'm well, Doctor Gonzo was. That was another kind. That was. Uh, just another pseudonym. That was just another pseudonym of Thompson. Okay. It might have been. It might have been Duke. But uh, if you remember, he was played by oh that one guy from like Young Frankenstein and like Everybody Loves Raymond. I can't remember his name for some reason. It escapes me. He was the dad. He was dad on Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, okay. But you remember he played the same guy yeah. when he the Torres did. <laughs> yeah. Benicio Del Torres is one of those actors that I feel like needs a little more, like, mainstream work. He's really good, but he's always had weird stuff. Like that, or Traffic, or, like, Hunted. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that last for the next time I level up, that next perk whenever I level up. Do you have any idea what the level cap is in this? I think 50. Because I think it's just the same as um, so it was four. Fallout 4. I think it's 50. Okay. I just wanted to get long game of getting perks, you know, that's the kind of thing you have to watch out for. I know you're a long way from there if it's 50, so it's not a big deal, but, you know, I've, I've realized before that I'm going down a path that I'm going to have to make harder decisions than I've been making, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... Can you rest on that mattress? I think I'm... Oh! Yes, I can. I thought I was too close to enemies. Shows what I know. Thanks for the I was killing all those enclave and kept sneaking back into their base to sleep. <laughs> Any of those discs or anything you could take? Like, there's a card right there. Like, I don't know if that was like picking up a key or if that gave you caps, but. That, I think, is what I needed. The fuck was that? What the fuck was me? what I need for this. Er. So what do you find more exhausting when chests are full of absolutely useless crap or when a game's like, no, plastic forks are worth picking up? Ooh. That can be tough. Uh, when plastic forks are worth picking up. That's, that's yeah. a little... <laughs> that that is that can be super tedious. Because you know what, I I do like the approach in Fallout 3 and New Vegas and 4 where yes, I can absolutely loot everything. I don't have to. Cuz everybody talks about um how they just picked up everything in Fallout 3 and I'm just like my <sighs> Archie, where the fuck are you? I need you. I have a door I can't open. It says something about being chained from the other side, right? The one at the top of the stairs? 
Nah, requires key. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, call him to you. There is a mod for this, I think, where you can call the dog over. That's what it is. You can whistle for the dog. He'll come to you. where I need to go next. Uh, just... I don't know if I say how the manufacturing process works, but okay. Yeah. Me in that bin. You know what I'm gonna have to do? There's a mod, and I found this, and I was like, I don't wanna do that. Where key items glow in this game. Oh. Or in this mod. Because there is a lot of stuff that just. You, you have to find it. You know what I mean? Yeah. those pods I I probably wouldn't pick these <laughs> that's just me but you know that is a thing you can do you know What do you think it would make you more think twice about stepping on grass if it tried to get out of your way while you're walking through the yard, or if it screamed when you stepped on it? Ooh, that is... Just think about how those things were making noises while you were picking them, and it's like, ugh. <laughs> I guess if they screamed at me, that that I wouldn't I wouldn't step on it. <laughs> Like, ah, uh, I just don't want to hear the screaming. I thought there was something out here, maybe. I'm thinking of a different, I think I'm thinking of a different one. Mm, yeah, 
that dog food. I just gotta eat it! character just looks at dog food and he's like Barney whenever he gets non-alcoholic <laughs> champagne. It begins! <laughs> oh, oh uh, yeah, I'm being shot at. I got time to pick a lock. It's just so funny to me to come around the corner and whack a guy in the face so hard that he just drops dead. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> and now I have the key. Impact. I will take it. Ah! No! <laughs> run, run away. I just think of, uh, I don't remember where I saw it, but some meme where it's like, how adventures begin. It was some picture from the Fellowship of the Rings. It's like, how does the dragon's adventures end up? And it was the guys from Monty Python being like, run away, run away. <laughs> In all of the games that I've ever run, I can't say that I've ever played anybody that was smart enough to run away. Uh. <laughs> I could I could have dropped the Tarasco motherfucker as Ada at level one and they'd be like, oh, I can take it. <laughs> like, okay. I catch this channel every once in a while that breaks down how you can break D D by the rules, and one of the things they brought up was how at level one there is by the rules a way to turn a cube of water into ice to instant kill anything and it hinges on having a bag of holding ah so you have to have a super generous dm <laughs> i was like what level one anything has a bag of holding <laughs> i mean you know it's channels like that why people don't get bags of devouring All the stuff like that does is makes uh, DMs more fastidious. You want it less open, pull that kind of shit, and they'll make it less open. Oh, yeah. And I'm not, you know, like, totally opposed to creative ways to kill somebody. Like, there was a enemy in a game I had that he had an amulet that, oh, if he, oh, is attacked... And it would kill him instead of killing him. It like teleports him over to the side and creates an illusion of him dying horribly. Well, the way someone ended up killing him, and they didn't necessarily know he had that, even though he had survived being killed horribly before, suspiciously enough. But uh, they had uh, armor of etherealness, and this was a player who's actually willing to use up the charges of stuff like that. Yeah. And so he went ethereal and then put something inside of the guy while ethereal and then became unethereal, so it just killed him. Mm. And that didn't activate the amulet because it wasn't an attack. So the guy just died. Neat. 
But yeah, no, I, I see a lot of these channels that are like, hey, if you make a level one character, this allows you to do this, 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 and this. And there's some of these that... Some of them that I've seen, they are like, okay, uh, rules as written, this is how much damage... You, this is the max amount of damage that you can deal with any level one character. No matter what the build is, no matter... Well, it, it has to be a very specific build. I'm sorry, let me back that up. Like, it has to be a, a druid of this race picking these spells, and this will deal, like, more damage than anyone should be dealing at level 1. Like, alright, that's cool, you, you're you right, that's, that's broke. But a build that hinges on a bag of holding, no brother, that's not how that works. Well, and something, one of the problems with the mentality that comes along with that kind of stuff because it doesn't have to you can make ridiculous builds and not be ridiculous but it really leads into the well you know the dungeon master has everything at their disposal and can make within rules without cheesing it builds that can wreck any build you have going on yeah and once that starts to happen they're like well that's not fair you're not supposed to meta game around what we're doing and it's like that's literally my fucking job it's like, you are doing the same thing. If you don't expect this to happen back, you're just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, like, as soon as I hear any of that kind of stuff, I'm, like, I'm thinking as someone who's been a DM, it's like, well, this, this, and this counters that. <laughs> you know. And it's not that you never let them get away with that kind of stuff, but, you know, and you don't make everything immune to it, but you can easily, you know, throw in, especially if they're fighting enemies who, you know, over time know what they've done. You know, if you're... If you're attacking a lich's minions with shenanigans, he, he's going to remember that shit. <laughs> he's be like, I'll devise a spell specifically to deal with these assholes. He's got the time. Hell. He has nothing but time. Yeah, as I say, something that really... I, tell me if this would bother you, that can really grind players' gears that I've done before. Is they've got to a place where, well, they're going to win against this lich. So the lich is like, well, fuck it. I won't deal with these guys. I'll just wait a hundred years till they're dead. They just don't hear from him anymore. <laughs> that would bug the fuck out of me. I'm <laughs> like, God damn it. No, you know, a, a, a lich would definitely be like, hmm, my machinations are too important. Yeah. But they're not so important that I can't just wait this problem out. Clean water. <laughs> yes, I do. Wait, I passed it up. Ooh. Damn. Did I get him? He's hydrating. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. I literally saved right before I went in there, so. Well, I kind of saved before going in there. I, I hit the bed. I'm seeing that uh, oil can in there, and I was like, thinking, you know, shooting it wouldn't make it explode, but throwing a Molotov cocktail next to it definitely probably would. Why didn't that mine go off? Yeah. Oh my. Oh my! Shit. Uh, bringing a new 
definition to firefight? Yes. <laughs> I wonder if it made you turn around because I thought you did it on purpose when you're questioning it was. Do you think it was Archie being like, hey, look at this, and it made your character turn around? I think he was trying to open dialogue with me, you know, like, hey, I'm I'm a follower. I have something I need to ask you. It's like, no, you don't. Let's go. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, what we need is a, uh, a mod where you get Gromit as your follower. Counts us as a person and a dog. That's it. I'm starting a new run. <laughs> Gotta call him Wallace. Yes. Gotta be like, cheese. actually rather appropriate for this world with him like, you know... Being like a crazy inventor? <laughs> yeah, just put together random crap from other random crap. It's like Fallout bread and butter. And he's the kind of guy in a world like this, you'd somehow to, like, the ghouls are gonna get to the moon and he's gonna be up there and be like, it's not cheese, guys. I guess it turned out it was cheese in his movie, though, didn't it? Oh, uh, you know, I don't remember. It's been forever. I think so, though. <laughs> Not a whole lot of them left. There are none of them left. I just had to. I just had to kill them all. That's all I had to do. So those other ones for other objectives? Yeah. Got to find. I think it's this way. You know there was that uh, expert uh, chest over by that guy, like, go around that corner over there? There should be an expert chest back there. You could probably get Archie to open. Archie, open. Unless I wonder if I had to move the hooligan. 
that peak. <laughs> this game, this the you know, this mod can really screw you on the hard chests, can't it? Yes, it can. Oh my god. Oh, okay, it is telling me where to go. I'm just not paying attention, because I'm stupid. <laughs> You're downstairs, huh? Trying to remember how to get down there. That, like, there it is, right? Like, that's what yeah, I'm trying but, to get uh, to. Who was down that, like, dark passageway, like, behind you? Like, it'll be over to your left here. Oh, never mind. Just over here. Yeah. I think it's over here though, inaccessible. Do you have a catacombs? I guess. You're gonna keep some weird stuff in their vaults. Shelf behind, over to the left too. Yeah. So sixteen bullets. Worth it. There's just times I don't think this mod knows how to reward players. Ah. Uh. There's times where it's like, oh my god, that was an awesome reward, and then there's times where it's just like, all of that hard work was for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Would you say it feels worse when it's literal crap than when it's, well, this is no good for my build? Um, hey, that might go down. Literal crap. Uh. Like, that's... Because, okay, it's it's no good for my build. Well, uh, it's still sellable. Yeah. You know? Get the rounds? Two uh, eighties. I guess you haven't been using those, have you? Well, I, I, a lot of times I pick that stuff up because it's their tickets uh, or caps or whatever. But there's just so few of them that are ever in turrets. It's just it just never feels worth it. What kind of guns use those? I'll let you know when I find one. Oh, uh, okay. That's a problem, I think, if I have a lot with this game, is that I find ammunition for guns that I'm like, where are these? Who has them? What's the deal? Hey, it'd be interesting if you could make your own turrets be a display with ammo scavenged from other turrets. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I think I need to go through a spot similar to like what's there. But where? Where? Are the internal maps any good in this? No. Mm, so it's got the whole like showing all floors at once problem? Yep. But that's, you know, that's the thing with these Fallout games. Yeah. I think most, one of the most practical problems that arise from that is when there'll be like three doors literally on top of each other. Oh man. It's kind of like pick a lane Bethesda. <laughs> because I got nothing else here. Come on, like, it almost shows you nothing. Almost. Well, technically there's uh, some doors and a little bit of like, uh, there's debris over here, and, and, like, man. Oh, well, it does separate the... They don't really let you see much of the map at a time. Yeah. It's kind of odd. Did they have four was? I don't remember. I mean, they're all built on the same engine as, like, Skyrim. Okay, but Skyrim didn't have that. You could go way over to the sky in Skyrim. Yeah. Hmm. Kinda just, I don't remember. I mean, yeah, you say they're all Skyrim, and that's true, but think about how different 4 is from Skyrim. No, that's, that's also true. Hmm. Do you know how Zombies Ate My Neighbors has a sequel? Aha! Ooh, shit. With discovery comes pain. <laughs> Oh shit! I'm I'm gonna have to redo the the whole like getting to that point. I think we'll see. I think you slept after killing all the guys in that room, didn't you? Uh, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Well, anyway, you know the game I'm talking about, right? Like the the sequel to Zombies at My Neighbors that people don't like as much. Okay. Yeah. Well. It turns out that basically when they made Zombies Ate My Neighbors, they licensed out and or, you know, sold out or at least, you know, 
the rights, not straight up sold, but like more like license out the rights to that game engine to another company, and they're like, yeah, you can make games using this. And they made their own game using it, but for some reason, I don't remember the exact details, kind of at the last minute, even though it was just a totally other game, just using the same engine, they ended up having to rebrand it to a Zombies Ate My Neighbors game. So it was one of those kind of odd things, you know? Kind of like Iron and Blood, but even less like it was supposed to be that. Because they had, like, new physics, like, um, momentum-based running and stuff like that. Like, you gotta get going, and also you kinda have to come to a stop. supposed to be infusing yourself with blood or drinking the blood? Hmm. You are asking the hard question there. You know, you're, you're probably drinking it. It's a Bethesda game. I mean, considering the uh, bonus you get in 3 is based off that idea, I... Find it the least bit surprising. You just soft lock yourself. Archie saved the day. <laughs> I mean, you see how quick that closed, though, right? Yeah. I did think I'd be able to open it, but no, I guess not. You know what I love finding mm. in uh, first aid kits? Anything that's not first aid related. You know, that, that, uh, this happened and been happening to me more and more in Fallout games. Finding stuff that really doesn't belong in there. It's not even stuff from under aid. You know, I, okay, and I get it. Not every first aid kit is gonna have something useful in it. That's fine. In this game, there is hardly anything useful in first aid kits. Oh. Is that a room with a bed in it? I'm not saying you should necessarily rest in bed, but like... Uh, oh, wow, it was. I thought I saw bed sheets. Yep, yep. It's like you're looting my dad's house, going through his junk drawers, finding two bullets. <laughs> I mean, I I wasn't gonna say it. Because <laughs> like, at first I was like, two bullets. I was like, oh, it's not that unrealistic in my life. But. You know, in the UK, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get these folks out of the vault. You know, uh, some of the stuff people say in this makes me wonder, considering we have a somewhat uh, international audience, how much uh, slang and innuendo I use that is basically undecipherable if you're not American. I know that ours gets around a lot more due to our media getting around a lot more, but you know what I mean, like. Yeah, that's, you know.
That's quite the door. Yep. Oof. Now that's a vault door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gonna do the healthy thing and unlike me not make a billion trips? Oh, you can't even pick that up. Worthless. How did I know for sure they were ghouls? No. No, no, no. It's just all of them but one. No. Oh. You don't look like the usual ghoul again. More like much of a scavenger. Oh. Oh. I literally just said that I woke up in a laboratory and I don't know who I am. There's something weird about you now. Tell me what it is. It's just like, I just did. I'm a tube man. actually made ghouls into zombies. Yeah. It's a little racist. It's like you're not telling me things that make me want to rescue you. Pretty funny if this was what led to this version of Mothership Zeta. Exactly. You see the same thing I do. It can only be one thing, can't it? There's only one sensible answer to this. Time travelers. Someone knew the war would happen and used future technology to travel back in time. Okay, yeah, time travelers. Fuck it. Let's do this.
Do you think she was, oh, is this crazy, or was it glowing mushrooms? Well, the mushrooms didn't help. <laughs> She's got anything on him. Yeah, let's try this out. It looks like you're traveling with someone already. No, sorry. This just went my sidekick having a sidekick? It's ludicrous. I'd be the lawful stock of the treasure hunters club. Which is just me for now, but I still have stampers. Come back when you take this meeting. I'm going to gather some more clues here. Look out for me around Camden if you want a second chance. Where is there he is? Still got that thought buzzing around my head. So you know how we were just talking about traveling together? Something on your mind. It's been a real experience working with you. Can't say it was a good one, but it was an experience. <laughs> oh shit. Kid roasting me. <laughs> I think it's that he'd be in St. Peter's. Oh man, did she already jet? Yeah, I think so. Might be able to catch her walking, but I probably know she teleported. There she is. There she is. Comrade, whoa, 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 this might have been a mistake. Broke out a gun on me. All right, cool. So we're gonna go take a break, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be back in a little while with some more Fallout London goodiness. And um, yeah, catch you guys in a little bit. <laughs>